Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on this video. Today we're going to take a look at Pop OS, which is something new from System76. It is a new distribution of Linux, which is going to be the default distribution that ships with System76 computers. System76 is a company that builds computers that are specifically designed to run Linux, and they've been around for quite some time. In the past, they have shipped Ubuntu as their default distribution of Linux, but they have suddenly decided, no, we're not going to do that, and they kind of have stirred things up a little bit with the announcement that they are coming up with their own in-house operating system for their machines. So I wanted to take a look at it, and I wanted to talk a little bit about Pop OS and uh, give you my opinions on it. I'm going to, the opinion part, I'm going to save to the end of the video. First of all, let's take a look at the website for Pop OS. It is very much in an alpha stage. It was only officially announced a couple days ago. Of course, the Linux community now is going mint crazy because Linux Mint 18.2 was released yesterday but we have this going on as well so not much here it says modern powerful beautiful not necessarily in that order uh, and you, if you say get it poppin you can click this and download the iso you can also look at their reddit page where people are giving them feedback and you can track bugs at github so pretty straightforward stuff there right now from system 76 I installed this in a virtual machine. I have kind of played around with it a little bit and looked at some of the different themes and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look around. There is not much about this that is terribly different from Ubuntu at this point. It is based on Ubuntu 17.04. The alpha is. And it is a GNOME or GNOME 3 desktop. I say GNOME, whatever you want to say is fine with me. And it comes with the really groovy System76 pop theme. The pop theme had been out for a while, actually, and now they've just decided that they're going to do their own OS. So this is kind of what it looks like. Let's see <clears throat> what's installed here. We have uh, just a very basic set of applications. It's all the basic GNOME stuff, plus LibreOffice is installed, and that is just about it. This is just for playing around with. It is not ready for production. I would not recommend downloading this and putting it on your computer and starting to use it because it is an alpha. The official release is coming up October the 19th for the first Pop OS, which will be based on Ubuntu 17.10. Uh, I do like this theme. I think it's very nice looking. They do some interesting things out of the box here. Like, first of all, the desktop is actually active, which means that you can right click and get something with a stock GNOME desktop that don't work. And they ship with a bunch of really nice custom backgrounds. I know a lot of people out there say, well, why do you even bother to talk about backgrounds on the desktop? We don't care about that sort of thing. Let's get down to system performance and all that stuff. But some people do care about this. So we're going to take a look at what it looks like. Let's change the background. I'll show you what comes with it by default stock. Uh, this is the default background right here. I'm not a huge fan, to tell you the truth, but we'll click on it. And then we have a, a great... I, I love this, this graphic art here for the lock screen page. So we get some of the standard GNOME stuff, some System76 branding in here, and some really nice wallpaper to choose from. It's wallpaper, I know, but like I said, some people find this stuff very interesting. So now that I've shown you the default, I'm going to go to the darker wallpaper because that one's a little bit too light for me. So what should we choose? Well, we could just do the negative image of that, I guess. That'll work nice. Okay, that's better. Eh, I don't know. Hold on, hold on. Let's get into... Eh, this is the one I liked before. We'll go with that. System 76's logo. Why not? By the way, I have no affiliation with System 76 of any kind. They do not sponsor my videos. I have recommended their hardware in the past to people. But System 76 does sponsor a lot of people who create content for the Linux community. 
podcasters and YouTubers, and I think that's really cool that they do. This is just my opinions we're talking about in this video today. So let us uh, look at the tweak tool, and we can look a little bit more at the theme. And we can play around with the different themes that come with it. We have just standard pop included right now, and we have pop dark. I'm going to open up a file manager so we can see what that looks like as well. So that's pop dark. And then we have something called pop slim, which essentially makes the toolbars and things smaller. Kind of like that myself. And then we have pop slim dark on the list. This is what comes installed. Now this I like. I think this looks really nice. So good job on the theme there, System76. What about what's under the hood? Well, it is Ubuntu 17.04. And the let's see what kernel we've got running. We are on kernel 4.10 which is perfectly all right. How about memory usage at boot up? Now I have opened a couple of little things here. The tweak tool and whatnot. And we'll just look at the humanly readable output here. 1.3 gigabytes of memory open or are being used by the system and all I've opened up is a file manager and the tweak tool. So I wouldn't call this lightweight, but that's the GNOME desktop anyway. GNOME desktop tends to suck up a lot of memory. They load a lot of functions that the desktop does in memory to make it more responsive. But when you compare that to something like XFCE that takes up 250 megabytes of memory with the system and everything running, uh, you're going to have to decide whether it's worth it to you to sacrifice a gigabyte for your desktop, but that's how it is. Take a look here at what's installed on the system. It's actually a very, very basic install that you get. They do have LibreOffice installed, and mostly it's just the other GNOME-type applications that are here. I have installed Synaptic Package Manager, which is not installed by default, just so I can have a little bit more control over the system. They want you to use GNOME software, or the software application. Now, this is what comes by default with Ubuntu and actually a lot of other distributions of Linux these days are using software. Takes it just a little while to load and so we can look in the categories and install things here. So I always look at sound and video because I'm always looking at sound type software. And a bunch of stuff listed, that's for sure. Simple screen recorder is available. You can click on this and it will do it. That's nice. That's now in the GNOME software application without having to hook up the PPA manually. So that's very cool. Very cool. That is not true of Linux Mint right now. Their software manager is pretty much the same as it's always been, and it only shows you things that are in the official repository. So yeah, that's software, and we've kind of already looked at what's installed, so there you go. That's basically it. And this system, speaking of software, and I want to look at software and updates. Uh, whether software properties GTK is installed by default, I'm not really sure. It comes in when you install Synaptic. Uh, that's what we're doing to look at to see what they have hooked up here and I see that we have you know pretty much the same repositories that we're used to if we look at other repositories canonical partners is not turned on but they do have a PPA for system 76 so that you can get the stuff straight from them that is standard operating procedure for system 76 all of their tweaks to Ubuntu is in the system 76 PPA now, at some point, I would imagine they're going to have to actually set up repositories. Uh, one of the things that bugs me about a lot of quote-unquote distributions of Linux I see these days is the fact that they're not really distributions at all. They're an Ubuntu base with some desktop thrown on it with a bunch of theming, 
And then when you open this application and look at it, all you get is a list of PPAs. Those are private package archives, okay? PPAs are very cool. They give you access to software that you just can't get from the repositories. However, they're also notoriously unstable. So I don't like to see a whole lot of PPAs hooked up when I open up some quote-unquote distribution of Linux. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. Take a look here at settings. They haven't done... Uh, it's, it's not terribly different. This is pretty much, like I said, stock at this point. So it's all, it's all the basic stuff. Look at details. It's reporting that it's Ubuntu 1704. So there you go. There is one difference with Pop! OS, and that is that when you install it, they have modified the Ubiquiti installer. If you're used to installing Ubuntu or Linux Mint or many other distri distributions use Ubiquiti as their installer, you do not create a user before you install the system. You actually install the system, and then you create the user account on first boot. That would make sense because System76 is a hardware provider, and so, therefore, they would want the end user to create the operating system, uh, create the user account on the operating system. So that's about all there is to show uh, with Pop OS. It's just a really nifty theme on Ubuntu 17.04 right now. But this is going to change. You've got to remember, this is totally an alpha. So I'm not going to say. Uh, you know, bad things about System76 for releasing this now. This is a test bed for people to look at and give them feedback and tell them what they want. When this originally came out, I reacted to it quite negatively on Facebook. I just, you know, like a knee jerk response, I posted that do we really need another Linux distribution? Because I have very mixed emotions about all of the different little distributions of Linux that come along. There's one part of me that says it's open source. Linux is cool. You can do whatever you want. Isn't it great that all these people are spinning their ideas into this? It's wonderful. If you ask somebody, why did I create a Linux distribution, whether that be a company or an individual, they're going to answer because I can. And they can, which is cool. But on the flip side of that, it comes across to me... Uh, a lot of the times it's being a fragmentation of effort and also it confuses the living daylights out of people who are looking at Linux from the outside. People who are used to a monolithic world of computing where you buy a Mac or you buy a machine with Windows on it and that's what you get. When they look at the Linux ecosystem and they see that there are all of these different distributions of Linux Man, it is confusing. There are also people within the Linux community that say, why, you know, I mean, the, the solution to if you don't like this, just go fork it and then you're going to create the wheel again with a different name on it. And some people say that that's just a duplication of effort. And I kind of lean in that direction because I see a lot of people making the same mistakes over and over and over and over again. Now, System76 appears not to be doing that. So that is cool. I'm glad. Uh, it's very simple. They're starting out very basic. That's good. And we'll see where this goes. And, of course, System76, they have a whole team of people there that have been actually doing this for quite some time with regular Ubuntu because, to be quite frank and honest, Canonical has not been very forthcoming with new features and support for their partners. And so System76 has had to fix problems on their end and modify things to make it work. Uh, that's just the truth about Ubuntu. I used to get asked all the time, what's the difference between Ubuntu and Linux Mint? And the best way to explain that is, is that Ubuntu is like if you buy a house that's 90% complete. Once you actually get the house, you're going to have to finish it off, which means you're going to have to buy all the furniture, you're going to have to paint the walls, you might have to put up light fixtures, you may have to lay carpet to make that a livable environment. So yeah, you get a nice house, it's a big box, it's a big white box, and then you got to do something with it. That is like Ubuntu with Unity right there. Is that because it was just not polished, it wasn't finished. Says, um, System76 has been making modifications to make it a little bit more useful. Linux Mint started out as a distribution 
that was based on Ubuntu that basically added codecs. And over the years, they have taken up where Canonical has left off. And so now when you install Linux Mint, which by the way has its own repositories, it's actually being developed alongside the Ubuntu operating system and it's Ubuntu compatible at this point. Uh, Linux Mint, when you install it, is like buying a house that's furnished. It has all the basic stuff that you need. You can take some of it out if you don't like it, or you can add to it, but at least when you go in the house, you're going to have a chair, you're going to have a bed, you're going to have a fully functional kitchen, you know, you're going to have a place to sleep, and then you can work on it bit by bit, but it's not like, oh, I have to build this new system. So that is why Linux Mint is very popular with people who are just starting out with Linux, because you get a whole setup, whereas Ubuntu always had that little bit of a hurdle that there was all this little tweaking that you had to do to get the system to work right and do what you wanted to do, and much of it you have to do in the terminal. Whereas with Linux Mint, you can install it. You never have to open a terminal. You know, there's some optional things that you can do at install from a terminal. So that's kind of what System76 is doing here. They've got, or they already had the pop theme going, and they're going to do that. Um, so after listening to a lot of things and reading a lot of things about this since it came along, I've kind of changed my stance a little bit because at first I said that I thought System76 had just done something really dumb. Why are you doing this? I mean, you have the power of Ubuntu and your partners. It's a name that people recognize that don't even know anything about Linux. But then I thought about it and listened to what they had to say. And uh, Ryan Sipes, who works for System76, and he talks a lot in the community, I heard him in an interview with Brian Lunduk say that they had basically been sitting waiting for Unity 8 to come along for like three years. And they hadn't added any features to the system waiting for Unity 8. And after they changed over to the GNOME environment and dumped Unity, there were a lot of people at System76 who said, uh, this is, uh, we, they don't know it, which way it's going to go. Let's do our own thing. And they decided to do that. And it does make sense for System76 to do that. They sell computers and they boast that their computers will work out of the box and that you will have a really good experience when you log in, regardless of what you're using it for. So it makes sense for them to control the software more. Not like they weren't already doing it, picking up where Canonical left off. And they, I've also said that in the future that I think Ubuntu is going to be available if you don't want Pop! OS. You just tell them, please install Ubuntu, and you'll get that version as well. How long that will continue, we don't know. We'll take a look at Ubuntu 18.04. When that comes along, that's going to be the first long-term support release with the GNOME 3 desktop as default. Everybody's got high expectations and big hopes for 18.04. Let's see what they do. So we'll see how this rolls along. Uh, so that's kind of my opinion on it. Uh, a lot of people ask me to look at this distro and that distro, and I have looked at many of these distros. I looked at one the other day that's getting a lot of press right now, and I'm not even going to say the name of it, but it's huge. It's a 3.6 gigabyte download, and it is such a hodgepodge of crap from different projects that they have pulled in, and when you open up the software sources, it's nothing but this long list of PPAs and it's inconsistent and it's not well made and it's it's huge bloated piece of garbage and when I see that I always go wow man you know this is just gonna be a nightmare for somebody who installs it so I'm not even gonna talk about it I'm not even gonna do that Ubuntu is quite easy to build on it's one of the reasons that you have all these different distributions is that all you need to do is go download the Ubuntu base and then you can start adding bits and pieces to it. And you can build whatever you want. You can do it yourself. You do not have to be a programmer to do that. You need to understand how the system works, know what packages you need, and you have to be able to edit a configuration file. If you can do those things and if you have a basic idea, you can build your own distribution or your own Linux experience. I did that myself about two years ago. I took the Cinnamon desktop and put it on Ubuntu and started out with nothing because I just wanted to see how far I could get with it. And what I got out of that experience is that I had a lot more appreciation for Linux Mint because those who try and develop for Ubuntu that are not part of the Ubuntu ecosystem do not have access to the Ubuntu build servers. 
they do not know what's going on. So what they have to do is they have to back engineer the system. So I will give you a for instance on this. The official spins of Ubuntu like, you know, Lubuntu, X Ubuntu or Zubuntu, Kubuntu, Ubuntu, Mate or Mate, however you want to say that. That's another one of those things that causes problems. All of those official spins, they have access to the development process from day one. But if you take a spin of, or a, rather a distribution that uses Ubuntu as the base, they do not. So, for instance, like Linux Lite, uh, which is actually a really good distribution, and I'm not saying anything bad about them at all. They don't have access to that. Zorin doesn't have access to that. Peppermint doesn't have access to that. All of this stuff down the line. Linux Mint's reaction to do to dealing with that over the years has just to do more and been to do more and more of the system themselves. At this point, Linux Mint is Ubuntu compatible. You can have Linux Mint with Debian. You can have Linux Mint with Ubuntu as the base. But the Linux Mint part of the system is Linux Mint, and they maintain their own repository. So, not quite the same as when you're talking about many others. There's that lock screen I like because I'm sitting here running in my mouth, and uh, it just kicked in. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, Linux Mint is a little bit of an exception to that rule, but pretty much anything else that uh, is based on Ubuntu that is not an official spin of Ubuntu, I'm very suspicious of. So we'll see what System76 does with this, honestly. Uh, I think that they will do well. I think that it's probably in the long run going to be a good idea. I, I, From a marketing standpoint, from taking the devil's advocate view of there are too many Linux distributions already and we're duplicating effort and this is what we're doing, uh, then yeah, that might be something that detracts from the System76 image. Some people might look at it and go, well, they're just doing their own thing. Or it could work in their favor. I really don't know. But I wanted to take a few minutes to explain that because of my initial reaction. So that's about all I'm going to talk about System76 and Pop! OS. We'll see what happens there. But real quick before I wrap it up, let me say that uh, yesterday, of course, was a big day in the Linux community because Linux Mint 18.2 landed. And I posted a video about how to do an in-place upgrade. And I noticed that the Linux community has gone Mint crazy. A lot of people are posting videos about 18.2. My personal experience with 18.2 thus far, and I upgraded in place yesterday on this machine, is that it has been very smooth. I have not run into any issues of any kind. Some people have said they've had a few tiny issues with desktop rendering, some themes not working, whatever the deal is. I didn't change anything. These are the stock Mint themes. I've got Mint Y Dark running. I do have my, you know, the GNOME Colors Common icon set because I really like that one. That's here, and that's about it. This is the same theme that I was running on 18.1. One thing I did change was that I changed how I do wallpapers. I don't know why I haven't done this in the past, but I got goofing around with this last night. So what I changed was is that I actually created a special folder in my pictures folder that's just wallpapers and moved all this stuff in. So right now, as you're watching the video, this will rotate. And uh, well, of course, it's, it's set to stay on for 10 minutes, but if we had this background up, you would have seen it change because I've talked for more than 10 minutes. So that's what I have done, little change that I moved on to 18.2. Uh, and also, uh, I have updated the wallpapers on the Easy Linux website. So those of you who have been watching my videos for years, have seen a lot of these wallpapers that I've collected. Uh, many of them are available on the website under the wallpapers page and you can check it out. And do check out Pop OS if you are somebody who likes to play with Linux and see what you think of it. Have fun with it because I think it's actually kind of a cool idea and uh, to be quite honest I, I wonder why they haven't done it earlier or at least in System 76's case. We'll see what they come up with. Because when you do buy, you know, when you buy a machine that has Ubuntu preloaded, I do know this about the US makers, and this is a good point to make, is that you're getting a modified version of the system anyway. System 76 has their tweaks. 
that they do for their computers and so does Dell. So Dell, it's not totally 100% stock Ubuntu, or at least it wasn't the last time I looked at it. When they were shipping Ubuntu 14.04, they had uh, some modifications to the system. So they're, they're all doing it if you're buying hardware that has Linux pre-installed on it. Anyway, so System76 obviously has decided that they're going to put their own name on it. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook, check out Easy Linux on the web, and check out FreedomPenguin.com for lots of really cool stories about Linux. I'm sure there will be a lot of opinion on there about Pop! OS and the latest Mint and all that other kind of stuff, groovy stuff to read. Thanks for watching, gang. We will do it again soon.